But let me give you my reasons why I think great powers seek nuclear advantage. And again, what I'm trying to do here is to tell you that it makes strategic sense. First, great powers sometimes have foreign policies that explicitly call for having a first use strategy, which of course means initiating the use of nuclear weapons for either coercive or for purposes of defeating an adversary. And any country that has a first use policy is going to want to have an advantage over its rivals. It, it kind of just goes with the territory. Now, let's talk about the United States. The United States, as was clear from much of the discussion this morning, has long had a first use policy. And there is no evidence that we're giving up that first use policy. That first use policy is inextricably tied to extended deterrence. During the Cold War, the United States took it upon itself to put its nuclear umbrella over Germany, mainly, in Central Europe, and over Korea, South Korea, and Japan in East Asia. We didn't want them to have nuclear weapons. We did not, for good strategic reasons, want them to have a trigger on a nuclear, uh, a finger on a nuclear trigger, so we extended deterrence to them. That meant we had to be willing <coughs> to use nuclear weapons to come to their rescue in case their survival was threatened. Uh, that involved a first use policy. And one, again, once you have a first use policy, you better think about nuclear advantage because you may have to use those weapons first. And of course, this situation is not going to change in the emerging multipolar war world because we are going to extend deterrence to both South Korea and Japan uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, so I would say to you, given that the United States is tied to a first use policy and that we're surely going to seek nuclear advantage in the future, you can rest assured we're going to arms race with all the other great powers in the system. And in this multipolar world, that means China and Russia. Second reason it makes sense to uh, arms race for advantage is even if you don't have an explicit or immediate need for a first strike capability, you want to have that capability in reserve because a rainy day may come along and you may need to think about initiating nuclear use. Uh, and when that's the case, you want to make sure you have maximum military advantage. Uh, let me give you an example. If a great power is involved in a conventional war with a rival great power, and it comes to believe that its territorial integrity or its survival is being threatened, I think there's a good chance that that great power is going to want to think about initiating nuclear use to rescue itself. Almost everybody agrees that great powers are likely to use nuclear weapons when they feel their survival is threatened. And great powers are remarkably sensitive about attacks on their homeland and attacks uh, on allies that live close to them. And you can imagine situations where a great power may want to rescue a situation uh, by initiating nuclear use. Then there's always the possibility, if you see a rival great power beginning to mobilize its nuclear forces, and that great power has vulnerable nuclear forces, and you know that great power is in a use them or lose them situation, you want to take out that arsenal as quick as you can. I'll talk more about this later, but this is the great danger that China runs. It has a quite vulnerable nuclear arsenal, gets into a crisis with the United States, the United States thinks it has a first strike capability, have very powerful incentives here in Washington to take out those Chinese nuclear forces before they can be used. Is this likely to happen? No. I'm just saying it's a serious possibility. And if you're the United States of America, you want to have the capability, should that event arise, and should you feel compelled to do it. Uh, furthermore, one can imagine plausible scenarios where a great power has incentives to launch a nuclear strike against a nuclear-armed minor power that's acting in threatening ways. And the prospect of having a disarming first strike capability against a minor power is much greater than it is against a great power. 
because a great power usually has a survival or retaliatory force. Not always, but usually. Uh, whereas when you're dealing with minor powers, you're dealing with countries like North Korea or Iran, if it were to get nuclear weapons, uh, you're in the realm of possible first strike scenarios. Um, third reason that you seek nuclear advantage uh, is because of the possibility that an adversary will use nuclear weapons against you or against an ally. And if that's the case and you have to retaliate, first of all, you want to make sure that the initiator, your adversary, doesn't gain an advantage over you. So you have to check the initiator. But furthermore, if you do get into a nuclear conflict, what you want to do is do everything possible to make sure you have a nuclear advantage so that you can settle that conflict on terms that are favorable to you. Again, I'm not saying that you can achieve that, but you can rest assured that great powers will go to great lengths to make sure uh, they maximize their chances of achieving that capability. And then the final reason that you're going to want to have nuclear advantage uh, is there's always a possibility that a close ally will initiate nuclear use and drag you into a nuclear war. Uh, one of the reasons we pay so much attention to extended deterrence is because we don't want allies to have their fingers on the trigger because we don't want an ally to start a nuclear war when it feels its survival is at stake and then drag us into that nuclear war. But that could happen. Not too likely now because extended deterrence works, but you hypothesize a situation where South Korea and Japan both have nuclear weapons and a war breaks out between one of those countries or both of those countries and China, it is possible nuclear weapons could be used. And if the Chinese mainland gets hit with nuclear weapons by the South Koreans or the Japanese, the Chinese might very well strike back at the United States as well as South Korea and Japan. Again, this is why we like extended deterrence. But for those sorts of scenarios, you want to make sure that you have a nuclear advantage. Because if you get involved in a nuclear war, you don't want uh, to be at a disadvantage. Let me conclude my discussion with just one point. Uh, I'm not arguing that nuclear arms racing guarantees that a great power will gain an advantage over its opponents. It's not my argument. My key point is the great powers constantly try to gain nuclear advantage over their rivals, and they do it because they're powerful incentives to do so. Okay, let me switch gears now and talk about the meaning of nuclear advantage. I've said to you up to now that great powers go to great lengths to achieve nuclear advantage. 